Welcome to this rapid revision session on the Revolt of the Earls in 1075, the last major revolt against William's rule. Let's get into it and see what happened. The plot unfolds at a wedding. Here are our main conspirators. The bride's brother, Roger de Bretaille, the new husband, Ralph de Guile, and the honoured guest, Wolfioff. But let's not forget the bride too, Emma Fitzosburn, the daughter of King William's oldest friend, William Fitzosburn, a Norman. I could go on about Emma Fitzosburn for ages. Unfortunately, though, the specification for this course doesn't give her as much due attention as I really wish that she would. I might mention her a bit later on because she is really important to this story. But sadly, also, I'm duty bound to stick to what the specification says. If you don't like it, complain to Edexcel. Anyway, let's see who the conspirators were. Roger de Bretagne was the Earl of Hereford. He was the son of William Fitzosburn and the Earl of a Marcher Eldon with additional powers. Remember, the Marcher Eldons were, were given special powers because they were on the border with Wales. Wales had not yet been conquered by the Normans, and so there were frequent raids across the borders. Marcher Eldons were given extra powers in order to try and control this. William had probably given uh, Roger less power than his father had enjoyed, and this may well have caused some resentment. When it comes to Ralph de Guile, the Earl of East Anglia, though, it's a little bit different. Ralph grew up in Brittany, and was the, he was the son of an Anglo-Norman. Again, Ralph's land and power was reduced compared to his father's holdings, but other reasons to rebel are a little bit lost to history. We can't be really sure. Perhaps the most obvious rebel, though, is Wolfioff. Wolfioff was the Earl of Northumbria, and in fact the last Saxon Earl of England. Wolfioff was the only Saxon plotter and the last Saxon Earl of England overall. He had rebelled twice beforehand, but had been pardoned by William as a gesture of Norman reconciliation after the harrying of the North, where even William was starting to worry he had gone too far and would be punished in, in hell. So let's have a look at the reasons why these men rebelled. These are all reasons why the revolt of the Earls in 1075 happened. Firstly, the loss of lands. The land holdings of the Earls had been reduced, with land given to the King instead. Also the loss of privileges. The marcher earls like Bretagne had enjoyed privileges including cas castle building and tax raising. These had been reduced. Also a loss of power. The combined loss of land and privileges had resulted in a loss of power. Wolfioff may also have resented being the only Saxon earl left, and who can blame him? But also there were opportunities to rebel at this particular time. William was away in Normandy at this time, as he often was, and he was rarely in England. His regent, Lanfranc, could act on his behalf, but it was expected that he would be slow to react. Remember, a regent was a person acting on behalf of the king with virtually the same powers. The plotters also had powerful allies. They had secured the help of the Danes. It was hoped that this would lead to Norman responses being split and weakened. Although, do remember, in the earlier rebellions in 1068 to 1071, the Danes had often promised help, but hadn't delivered. We'll see what happens this time. There was also some leftover Saxon rebelliousness. It was expected that the Saxons would rise up against William as they had done between 1068 and 1071. However, if you know this topic already, you might also be able to identify a reason why actually that maybe isn't as likely as you might think. Largely down to fear. What's the plan then? The plan of the plot was simple, but not especially realistic. Firstly, raise armies in their earldoms to unite and overthrow William's rule. Then strike whilst William was in Normandy, leaving his regent Lanfranc in charge. Rely on Anglo-Saxon support for extra strength. And get support from Canute, son of King Swain of Denmark. Once they had beaten the, the forces under Lanfranc, and before William could respond, the plan was to divide the kingdom into three and share it between themselves. You could do some tasks here where you summarise the plan in a paragraph or two, you can decide which elements of the plan rely on assumptions, so deciding that something simply will happen even without that much evidence. And explain one part of the plan that seems likely to succeed, and how likely is the plan to succeed overall. If you want to do those tasks, then sure, pause it here. If not, we'll move on to what actually happened. So which country did the rebels hope to get support from? Did they? How did they hope they'd catch William out? How did Archbishop Lanfranc know what was happening? How did Lanfranc respond? And, just to finish off, the revolt failed. If you were William, how would you deal with the three plotters? Here's the key info. The plotters planned to get support from the Danish fleet, Denmark, led by Canute, son of King Swain of Denmark. But they arrived late, saw the revolt was failing, raided the coast and left, just like they had done before. 
How did they hope they'd catch King William out? Well, William was not in England, he was in Normandy. This meant that he would find out later and be slow to react. It was a perfect time for a revolt in England. Remember, there was no instantaneous messaging at this time. If you wanted to take a message, you had to take it personally, and that relied on some sea travel and travelling by road. How did Archbishop Lanfranc know what was happening? Well, here Wolfioff becomes the traitor to the plot. Earl Wolfioff switched sides and gave the plan away to Lanfranc, who was ruling as regent on William's behalf. This allowed Lanfranc to respond quickly before William returned to England. How did Lanfranc respond? Well, mostly quickly and decisively. Saxon support never materialised. It's possible that they were still terrified by the memory of the Harring of the North, and the earls were quickly defeated by the army raised by Lanfranc. By the time William arrived, the revolt was virtually over. So what happened to the plotters? What would you have done? Firstly, Roger was captured. Much like he had done to Morcar a few years earlier, William imprisoned him for life but did not execute him. Was William getting soft in middle age? Ralph fled back to Brittany. William besieged his castle at Dole, but had to withdraw. I should point out that actually this was being defended by his wife. I told you that Emma Fitzosborne was pretty cool. Although Ralph was exiled and, wanted him, um, and a wanted man, he basically got away with it. He had much to thank his wife for this, who successfully resisted William in their castle. And again, I wish that she was a bigger part of this story when it comes to the GCSE course. But really, look her up. She's amazing. Wolfioff fled, but William attempted him home, where he expected to be pardoned again. After all, he had fatally betrayed the plot to Lanfranc. However, this being his third rebellion, William had lost patience with him. He was executed. Maybe he had that coming. Final points then. Why did the revolt fail? Wolfioff betrayed the plan to Regent Lanfranc. Lanfranc responded quickly to the threat. The Danes arrived too late to lend their support. The Saxon people failed to support the revolt too. William had time to return to England and deal with the rebellion, although, let's be honest, Lanfranc had done most of the heavy lifting. And the conspirators failed to join forces. Add to that the fact that Archbishop Wolfstan prevented Roger de Bretagne from leaving Herefordshire. And the Saxons mostly either supported William or feared his revenge. Remember the Harring of the North. So the revolt of the Earls of 1075 was the last major rebellion against William, and it was a dismal failure. Arguably, it never really had a realistic chance of winning. But again, it shows how secure and how strong William's power was by 1075. That's the end of this rapid revision video. I hope it's been helpful to you. And if it has, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you've got your own topic that you want me to cover in these rapid revision videos, pop it in the comments below, and I'll see what I can do. Thanks very much for watching, and goodbye.